Good day everyone, Doc Mika here and this is the first lecture video for this course. This is a brief introduction to the general uh, field of surgery. I am a personal fan of medical dramas from different fields of medicine. You have House for Diagnostic Medicine, you have Grey's Anatomy for a Surgery, uh, good doctor is pretty much um, surgical and diagnostic, more focusing on the characters. But I do love medical dra dramas, and I am not—I know I'm not alone for that. Um, so, in my um, short stint uh, as a vet veterinarian, I have worked closely in the field of companion animal medicine and surgery. So. Um, my experience, I believe, could uh, bring us into this course together and make it uh, more productive, even though I know you're itching to actually do surgical stuff, which is a challenge for this semester since we are uh, confined in our um, digital devices and meeting online. So I hope that whatever you're going to learn this semester uh, for any other course, any other subject will be retained uh, when it's time for you to go back to school. All right. So when we talk about surgery, it, does it mean that it's just about cutting? Is it just about removing stuff? Is it about um, uh, fixing stuff? All right. Is it just about all the scalpel and the blood and... Um, bahalana, right? Really, a surgery comes from a Greek Latin word chirurgie, which um, roughly translates to what we call handwork. All right. So surgery is the use of manual and instrumental operative techniques, meaning surgery can be done with uh, can be done with your hands themselves and the use of instruments. All right, both. And these are used to diagnose or treat a pathological condition, um, improve a body function, or the morphological appearance and or the quality of life. So these are the rough goals of a surgery. It can diagnose and it can treat as well. All right. So it's not just about cutting. You have to figure out first what is a surgery for. Is surgery for this animal um, necessary all right we are going through all the principles of that uh, as we go along this course the last picture is Kira. all right she was diagnosed with an oral tumor i think this was originating from the gum line and let's be honest if you face this in uh here in this country a lot of veterinary practitioners would just put this cat to sleep right usually that's the the initial approach um it's too hard it's very hard um surgically to remove you're not sure if you could reconstruct the face of this animal and um uh, restore the function of the oral cavity and there is a lot of function uh, there's a lot of factors to consider there your capacity as a surgeon, the physical health status of the animal, and do you have the devices or uh, equipment for proper diagnosis of what kind of mass this is, and if you could do the surgery with the instruments that you have. However, they were able to remove that tumor, and slowly Kita and her face were reconstructed and slowly went back to normal so this is just one of the success stories due to surgery this is why surgery is a vital part of a medical degree this is why you have three subjects for surgery right the thing is though even if you score high with this uh, with these courses even though you pass exams right um it doesn't mean that you are going to be a good surgeon. You have a good foundation, yes. But surgery is half knowledge, half instinct. Some would even throw a little bit of improv there. Because no surgery is just, you know, one thing. 
we cannot approach uh, surgery as uh, a recipe because some things might work during the surgery, some things might go awry during the surgery or even after. Uh, when we talk about companion animals, it's very important to um, have a individual plan for our animals. When we talk about farm animals like uh, cows, uh, cattle, small ruminants and pigs, of course, your approach would be different as well. That is why you have separate subjects for those. So what are the different types of surgery? We can um, uh, classify the surgical procedures based on different factors. Number one is urgency, all right? Is it urgent? to conduct or perform this surgical procedure. So you have elective surgeries, which are usually done upon the client's request for owned animals. We usually do a neutering, um, we call this spay and neuter campaigns uh, for these animals that, are, that don't have owners, right? They're strays to prevent overpopulation of the streets. And usually these are non-life-threatening. If you do not do it, it's fine. If you do it, it's good. You know, so elective. Uh, Semi-elective would be uh, those surgeries performed to avoid permanent disability or death. Now, as uh, I believe you are in different uh, batches, you know, of uh, students. So you have different um, levels of exposure to animals for now. And you have different backgrounds, right? Um, so some dogs, right? Some breeds of dogs are predisposed to certain um, orthopedic problems like hip dysplasia, um, um, hip dislocations, and such. So these, uh, uh, this predisposition to those pathologic conditions, which could lead to the animal's disability or um, being in chronic pain later on in their lives actually necessitates a certain procedure, right? You could cut off the femoral head, you could replace the hip through a procedure called total hip replacement as seen in this image. But this is, um, this is basically not urgent, right? This is um, performed later on. It, sh it, it can be scheduled through time to avoid disability or death meaning you may do it now but you may delay it right you may delay it but only for a certain amount of time and then you have to do it and then of course emergent would be those procedures that need to be performed um as up right you need to save a life a limb or an animal's functional capacity now cattle are very um prone to bloat which is um seen in this image so you need to correct that through a certain kind of surgery to save the could be save the life of an animal you could save a limb or the functional capacity of a certain body part of the animal all right now another way to classify surgeries would be based on the purpose or the goal of that procedure some procedures are diagnostic in nature meaning you only do the surgery to um, aid or confirm a medical diagnosis. Now, we have a lot of techniques how to diagnose animals. We have laboratory tests, we have physical examinations, we have diagnostic imaging like x-ray, ultrasound, CT scan, and MRI. However, there are times that these imaging techniques, however invasive they are, can uh, still be not enough to uh, for you to um, reach a definitive diagnosis. That is why there are some surgeries that are done to actually confirm your diagnosis because you just have to see uh, a certain tumor inside. So you have to open the patient up. You have to see for yourself the morphological changes in that animal that will bring you to a definitive diagnosis. Now, most sur surgeries are therapeutic in nature, meaning they are done to treat or potentially treat a condition. You can remove a mass, you can um, 
uh, fix something inside that was ruptured or was broken, you know. And also, some surgeries fall under the cosmetic branch, which are performed to improve the morphological, I, I put quotation marks on the improve, on the morphological appearance of an animal. So, um, those controversial procedures like tail docking, ear cropping, um, what else? Um, can be um, a cosmetic surgery. However, some surgeries which can be branded as cosmetic, like fixing the external naris of an animal which is uh, finding it hard to breathe, like brachycephalic breeds, pugs, bulldogs, and such, um, they can be therapeutic in um, classification. Right? Now, another way is based on uh, the technique. What are you actually doing during the surgery? So there are a lot of terms for this. Excision would be the removal or cutting out of a body part, right? If you remove, um, what do you call this? If you remove an ovary, if you remove one kidney, that is excision. Uh, while a resection would be removal of an internal organ or a part of an organ. Reconstruction is repair of an injured or deformed body part. Very common for those animals born with congenital anomalies. So you do reconstruction. Uh, implantation would be you are placing uh, a medical device for the following reasons. You, it is for replacing a missing biological structure. That is why you have um, pacemakers implantation for, um, for people who need extra what do you call this, electrical um, stimulation for their heart to pump at the right rate and at the right strength, um, enhance an existing one or to support a damaged one. Uh, microchip implantation is also um, classified as this, right? Replantation is you are reattaching a severed body part where, while transplantation is you replace an, an atomic structure with another of that structure from another animal. All right, so those are the classifications of surgery. I know by now you have a lot of um, surgeries in mind already. I, I do love it when, when kids or when students are a fan of medical dramas like me because we relate. But if not, it's, it's, there's still time for you to, to watch all those things. All right? Now, sa dami ng mga surgical procedures known to man and those things that we do to our patients, how do we name them? We have to find a way to organize the nomenclature of these surgical procedures so that when you hear it or when you read it, you already know what is being done before you actually do it, before you see it being done. Right? So for excisions and resections, and ulit yung excision and resection, we're removing an organ or a part off. So um, surgical procedures are usually named in this way. The first part of the word is the body part, and the last part of it, the suffix, would be interchangeable depending on the nature of the surgical procedure. For example, for excisions and resections, the suffix that we use is uh, ectomy, right? Ectomy. So if we want to remove the spleen, right? The spleen, what do we call this surgical procedure? That is called splenectomy, all right? Now, uh, we could go into detail if it's a partial splenectomy or a total splenectomy. A total splenectomy, you're removing the entire spleen. If a partial splenectomy, you're only removing a part of the uh, spleen. It doesn't matter if it's the, he the head or the tail. It's just a part of it. So, dadagdag yung total or partial, right? Now, what if there is a tumor on um, one of the kidneys and you have to remove the kidney? What do we call the surgical procedure? Did I hear kidneyectomy? Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, sometimes it's not that uh, literal. You have to think of the other term for the kidney. So that would be, what is the basic unit of a kidney? 
it's composed of the Bowman's capsule, glomerulus, you know, the tubules, the nephron. So that is called a nephrectomy. So it can be total or partial as well. Now, this common procedure wherein we remove the ovary and the uterus of an intact female animal. We also call it a spay. Yes, call it a spay. But what is the other term for this? OHE, which stands for ovario hysterectomy, right? Very good job. Now, um, sometimes we remove things, you know, we remove some organs and such, but it doesn't end with ectomy, right? Especially with this cat right here who just woke up and realized that his testicles are gone, right? So sometimes there are ways to, uh, other ways to um, name a surgical procedure. So another term for this is Asian. Another suffix is Asian. So for the removal of testicles is castration, right? What if we remove a limb or a part of a limb? That is called amputation, correct? Right? What if we remove uh, an eyeball, right? This is very common for dogs after a dog fight or if they have a tumor in their eye, if they have an infection in their eye that requires that eyeball to be removed. What do we call this procedure? This is what we call Enucleation. All right, good job. Now, for uh, what if we are opening a body cavity or a hollow organ? The suffix for that is otomy. Otomy. All right. So if we open the abdominal cavity, we, we always uh, the, the most common surgeries are abdominal surgeries because that is where all the abdominal organs are and we uh, there's a lot of surgeries to be done from the gastrointestinal system, the urinary tract, the genital system, and um, what do you call this? The liver, of course, and the kidney. So what if we're just opening the abdominal cavity? Okay, We're not going into the detail of what we're going to do inside the abdominal cavity. But just the opening of the abdominal cavity, that is called ciliotomy or laparotomy. All right. So um, some literature would vary. Pagdating sa ano ang difference ng ciliotomy and laparotomy, some would say that opening the abdominal cavity on the lateral side, as seen in this picture, is a laparotomy or a flank laparotomy. Ciliotomy is. Um, is specific to opening the abdominal cavity through the ventral midline um, area, kung sa linea alba area, so that's ciliotomy. But they are interchangeable depending on the literature that you read. Right? What if we open the thoracic cavity? We do this um, not commonly here. I, I rarely see this in here in the Philippines, but it's very common to be done in other countries for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. What do we call this? This is what we call a thoracotomy. Good. Now, what if we are... Now, these are other examples. All right. Um, surgical opening of the intestine would be enterotomy. All right. Um, you can specify this depending on what segment of the intestine you are opening. So you can name opening of the of the duodenum as the duodenotomy. Um, for jejunum, it's usually jejunotomy. You know, ileum rarely because nothing really happens in the ileum. So, you know, it could be that specific. But sometimes when you say enterotomy, it um, automatically means um, jejunum, you know, for, for some people, for some people. Now, uh, Urinary bladder is called urocystotomy. Sorry, the opening of the urinary bladder is urocystotomy. You have to be very specific, especially if there are two, you know, um, similar organs inside the body. For some of you, you might think cystotomy would work. You know, cystotomy is um, would automatically mean opening of the urinary bladder. Hindi na kailangan ng uro. But there's also another bladder inside the abdominal cavity, which could be opened as well for surgery. What is the other bladder? That balloon thing in between the liver lobes? In charge of concentrating and storing bile? 
the gallbladder, right? So when you say cystotomy, and um, you're not in the Philippines, okay? <laughs> when you say you're not in the Philippines, um, they're gonna get confused. What bladder are you talking about? Because cyst is bladder, right? You're opening the bladder. Which one? The urinary or the gallbladder. So if you're opening the urinary bladder, that's urocystotomy. If you are opening the gallbladder, uh, sometimes for um, removal of uh, gallbladder stones, uh, doing culture sensitivity testing and such, um, you call that cholecystotomy. All right. Now, for minimally invasive imaging procedures, we have the suffix oscopy. All right. This is the surgical insertion of a scope into the body for real time visualization. All right. Now, it would vary from different parts of the body. Like for example, if you insert a scope inside the mouth for you to visualize the lumen of the esophagus in the stomach, that is called endoscopy. Now, it might be so, uh, what do you call this, general when we say that endoscopy because endo is inside. But endoscopy would always mean that you're um, inserting uh, a scope from the mouth to uh, down to the esophagus and the stomach. Now, what if we want to visualize the respiratory tract? Right? We are inserting a scope through the mouth to but advancing it to the trachea and the bronchi. Hmm? That is what we call bronchoscopy. Right? Another uh, example would be insertion of the scope uh, through the urethral orifice. To visualize the urinary bladder, a lot of uh, practitioners are using this as well to treat uh, gallbladder stones without opening the animal. They're using laser to do that. So this is cystoscopy. So do not forget the S there, oscopy. Now, another very common um, surgery, well, not here, but abroad, um, would be insertion of a scope through the abdominal wall to visualize the abdominal cavity. This is what we call. We're making incisions on the abdominal wall and then we insert the scope through there. Not through the mouth, huh? Not through the mouth. Through the skin to visualize the abdominal cavity. This is very common, commonly done in humans though. I've had laparoscopy. Alright. No, I dropped it so easily. Laparoscopy. <laughs> Alright, now it would matter dependent na lang sa kung ano yung gagawin ng surgeon after the laparoscopy. Are they using the laparoscope to just visualize what's inside or are they treating something inside right now if we are creating semi opening a uh, semi permanent or permanent openings in a body part that is supposed to be closed um that is uh named by the organ and then suffix would be ostomy all right commonly um used um wrongly with otomy so you have to be very careful with that. So if we want to create an artificial hole on the ventral aspect of the trachea, sometimes we do this as an emergent procedure for animals that are choking, that, and you cannot remove the, the, the thing that's blocking the trachea. Or if you want to do emergency ventilation for people and animals, you do this, what we call tracheostomy. Now tracheostomy can be done you know, just uh, semi-permanent, meaning you're just, you're going to remove it after you know, the animal can uh, breathe on its own again. Or it could be permanent, especially for animals that have a problem with the upper respiratory tract na hindi makapasok ng maayos yung hangin. So they need a, another hole for them to breathe uh, in, in mm. from. Sorry. Mm. Excuse me. Uh, what if we want to create a permanent hole in the urethra para hindi na siya hindi na kailangan dumaan ng ihi through the entire urethral tract for it to be um, expelled through the urethral orifice. This is very common in cats when um, and male cats specifically na they develop um, blockages on their, uh, in their urethra and the thing is the urethral lining, if you remember your histology, is um, has a tunica muscularis 
and that tunica muscularis would contract around the stone that's blocking the urethra, causing the urethra to be narrower even if you remove the stone already. So means and wala nang stone, hindi pa rin makaihi yung pusa dahil um anatomically narrowed na yung daanan. So what uh, doctors do is do a urethrostomy, meaning you're making another hole through the urethra um, so that you're bypassing the whole urethral tract. And uh, this surgery we're in, we make a hole on the left lateral side of the esophagus to place a feeding tube for cats. It's called um, esophagostomy. You're going to do, you're going to be doing this in surgery too. Hopefully when we return to physical classes already. If we want to repair a damaged body part or a congenital anomaly, one rough, um, it could be damaged or it could be, you know, they were born with it. Um, this is what we uh, call, uh, oh, this is, we end this with Rafi, all right? So very common for um, puppies to get a hernia or to be born with a hernia. Um, it could be from any other side, umbilical, inguinal, perineal. But the repair of this, you know, the surgery that is done to repair this is called herniography. Right? Now, the, uh, there is also another internal hernia, which is diaphragmatic hernia, which could be damaged through uh, trauma. So that's also called diaphragmatic herniography. Now, if we are reconstructing a body part, right? We cons reconstructing a body part. That is ended with plasty. This is what I, I told you about before. Um, some breeds were born with what we call stenotic naris. The their noses are too um too closed. Kumbaga. Walang area for the air to go in and out freely. Um, and they are predisposed to what we call brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome. Um, the nose is just one of that. Uh, and the BOAS is a syndrome, meaning it is a combination of different clinical, um, maraming mali clinically. Okay? Number one is the nose. Number two would be an elongated soft palate. Number three, the arytenoid cartilages could be, um, you know, they could be dysfunctional. So there's a lot of things wrong with with these breeds so with uh, sorry going back <laughs> to the nose what do we call this surgery on the nose to reconstruct it as you can see the before and after mas may may uh, hole na ngayon napapasukan yung hangin that's what we call a rhinoplasty all right just one of the surgeries included in the treatment of boas or in the management of boas now, if we want to fixate or suspend an organ from a certain position inside the abdomen, remember, the abdominal organs are designated kung saan sila, left or right. The spleen is always on the left. The duodenum is always on the right. Ba? Ganun siya. So, what if um, these organs ay nagkagulo and then they become displaced? Some, uh, the stomach might be going to the right side, the duodenum will be on the left side, you know, they, they twist, things happen. There are diseases that are called for that. Now, you have to prevent that from happening. So, we call that surgery pexy, okay? Uh, the suffix is pexy. And this is very common for um, in doing in the stomach when uh, the stomach twists during bloat or what we call gastric dilatation and volvulus or GDV, which is an emergency procedure. Now, um, we call this uh, gastropexy, wherein we fix, fix or suspend the stomach uh, on the, um, sorry, the, the antrum or the pyloric, pyloric region of the stomach to the right abdominal wall para hindi siya uh, mag-twist, okay? So, this is one um, example of that. All right, so this is the end of intro to surgery. Uh, again, this is just a brief uh, lecture video because my usual would be around one and a half hour. So I do hope that um, 
you're able to be well versed pagdating sa nomenclature and sa classifications ng surgery. So when I say something na medyo bago sa pandinig and you think, "Oh, what what surgery does she mean?" Okay? So you have to go back to this lecture so that you already know na for example, if I say amputation, you know what I mean already. Um, this is why I started with this lecture. Para backgrounder, alam nyo na na kapag may sinabi akong uh, surgery, you know, when I say craniotomy, what do I mean? Diba? What cavity in the body am I trying to enter with a craniotomy? Yan. So, so I hope that this first week of classes, you're all good. You know, I will see you on uh next week <laughs> again for another lecture on module one and welcome back to class everyone bye oh and if you have any questions do not hesitate to message them to me have a good weekend everyone <laughs>